Hey everybody, Bobby Chu here. So today I want to talk to you about how to develop an amazing style. Now this is something that I always wondered as a student and uh, something that I tried to develop. You know, I would sit there at my desk and I would literally draw a drawing over top of drawing and go, oh, that drawing, it's not quite there yet. Let me put another piece of paper on top and let me draw it again. Uh, still not there yet. Let me put another and so on and so forth. Did I ever develop that amazing style that I was looking for? No, never. You know, it wasn't until I stopped actually looking for my style and just started looking for great knowledge that's when the real style starts to develop. And how this works is, you know, say you are on the quest for knowledge and you find this amazing artist and this artist paints incredibly and you get this person to divulge their secrets and teach you the thinking behind their paintings. The artist starts to explain to you, well, first you do this, first you do that. And then you take that information and you totally absorb it. Why? Because you want to work on The Walking Dead or some other kind of zombie kind of thing. And so you're going to take this knowledge that this person has given you and you would apply it, you would mix it in to all the other knowledge, all the other stuff that you've been doing. Perhaps you're the type of person that is not really interested in working on zombie movies and things like that. You're more interested in children's entertainment. So you learn this amazing lesson from this artist and you go, okay, that was cool. I'm gonna put it on the shelf over here. It's not what I wanna do yet, but it's really great knowledge. And instead what you're doing is you're looking at that the pink of the flesh and you're going, wow, this is really great. Now that really interests me because that kind of inspires me to use it for this pink uh, pig unicorn that I might be painting. You know, so that's the information that you've taken from this amazing artist and the amazing lessons that this person has given you and you apply it into your own art. And perhaps later on, the exact opposite happens where you're learning from this amazing children's entertainment artist and the Walking Dead guy is not as interested in some of the stuff that you're interested in, right? So as you start to learn all this knowledge, you start to take in the things that you like and you start to put it into your art. That makes perfect sense, right? That's how we all do it. You know, the first time you learn about cast shadows or something and you put it on your character and you're like, wow, that looks really effective. That looks really cool. I'm going to start adding it everywhere. And that's something that we naturally do all the time. Now, when you meet the best artists in the world and you look at their art, you already love it. Then you meet the person, get to know them. You will start to find these relationships between the art and the person because the best styles reflect you as a person, not just looks like an amazing painting. So for example, uh, Peter Desev, one of my favorite artists in the world, and uh, his art is always so witty, so humorous, so charming, looks so effortless. And if you ever got to meet the guy, Peter is a very charming, humorous, you know, witty, and very kind of like effortless kind of guy. So it really reflects him as a person. Now, Kay Asadera, she loves to paint beautiful, whimsical, fantastical things, very adventurous things. If you ever got to meet her, you would know that, yeah, she is this beautiful, fantastical, whimsical woman that loves to go on adventures and things like that. And it actually speaks about her as a person as well. Now, I like to paint weird, creepy creatures. How does that relate to me as a person? Well, I'll tell you. You know, I was born with an underbite. So as a child, you know, kids would make fun and things like that. Kids can be cruel. You know, I'm well adjusted now, but I feel like kind of looking back in hindsight, I feel like I've always gravitated towards creatures and weird, unusual, fantastical things. And in a way where those creatures are not violent, not creepy, like just like the bad guy. I'm always looking to show these weird, fantastical things in appealing ways. Why? Because I feel like I'm that creature. I relate to that creature. You see, it comes from a personal place. And it's an absolute reflection of how I am as a person. Now, if you want to learn as fast as you can and excel as fast as you can, I definitely recommend signing up for Schoolism subscriptions. It's only $15 a month. You can't beat that. You know, it's less than a blank sketchbook a month. 
It's way easier than just studying paintings and thinking about how did that person do that? You know, so highly recommend that. If not, hey, looking at pictures is also really great. It's just not as quick. Okay, so hope you guys like the video and I hope you guys will uh, tune in next time. Now, as always, if this video has helped you, spread it around with your friends, share it on your social media, things like that. All right, everyone, so if you like the video, you wanna learn more, you wanna improve as an artist, highly recommend clicking over to Schoolism, signing up for the newsletter, because in this newsletter, you will always get free videos and tutorials and news about Schoolism, so you can keep up to date with what's going on in the world. Click over now, and I'll see you guys next time.